powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Oweda. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We we'll rejoice and be glad you're welcome to day 45 of All Nations Crusade. We have consistently taken this teaching from one level to the other, helping more people to receive healing and to walk in the knowledge of who they are in Christ Jesus. And today we'll be focusing on your faith has made you whole. You know, when it comes to receiving from God, the most important thing he's looking at for is not how intelligent your prayer is. It's not how the eloquence, how eloquent you are in the presentation of your prayer. What he's looking for is your faith. <laughs> This is so important and so relevant that we'll begin to understand that what God is looking at for is the faith. Do you believe that he is able to fix this situation? Do you believe that he is able to change the climate of your dream, your destiny, your vision? Do you believe that God is able to fix it? This is what he's looking for. In Hebrews 11, verse 6, he said, He that cometh to God must believe. It's not the tears he's looking for. He's not looking for worry and anxiety. He's not looking for how eloquent you are in prayer. That's not what he's looking for. He's looking for faith. Do you believe that I can do it? Do you believe I can fix this marriage? Do you believe I can fix your health? Do you believe I can fix and restore what they said that can never be restored? Do you believe? He said, he that cometh to God must believe. Believing is a requirement when it comes to the things of the Spirit. He said, he that cometh to God must believe. It is a must that you have to believe. Because if you don't believe, you cannot receive. How do you receive? You receive by believing. He said, he that cometh to God must believe. If you don't believe, the miracles will happen. If you don't believe, the breakthrough will come. If you don't believe, the increase will come. He said, he that cometh to God must believe. This is the doorway to supernatural living. You come to God, you believe. And then the miraculous will begin. Now, let us to look at the scripture in Mark chapter 5 from verse 30. We're going to look at about the account of the woman of issue of blood in Mark 5 verse 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue has gone out of him, and turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? You know, Jesus had the crowd followed his ministry. The crowd was around him during this situation that took place here. And he said, who touched my cloth? You know, it's, it's a very funny question. If all my kids are here right now and they're touching me, playing with me, and then I ask, who touched me? <laughs> they said, Dad, what are you talking about? Everybody's playing with you. But Jesus asked the question because he knew there was a, a spiritual transaction has occurred in his account. <laughs> there is a, a transaction, there is a, 
I'm trying to use that word, there was a transfer of supernatural strength. Someone just made a connection and he said, who touched my clothes? Who did this? And Vex 31 said, and his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude trunk in thee. What are you talking about? Why are you saying who touched you, Jesus? He said, Jesus is not talking about what the crowd touched, touched him, how the crowd touched him. He was actually talking about a faith connection that received a virtue. It is by faith connection who received, he said, he said, thou says the uh, thou, thou seest the multitude drunk in thee, and say, Thou hast touched me. And he looked around, about to see her that has done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what has done in her. When the power of God come upon you, it takes care of issues within you. What has done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. She told Jesus all the truth. Verse 34 said, And he said unto her daughter, Thy faith had made thee whole. This is what we're talking about today. Your faith will make you whole. Your faith will bring you out of it. Your faith, Jesus looked at that and said, Your faith, in how did she receive this faith that changed her situation? If you notice in the subsequent verses of this same chapter, she heard about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, she believed what she heard. This is how you create the atmosphere for the miraculous, is when you believe what you have heard. She heard about Jesus, and she believed that the miracle worker was around, and she can take her healing. She can be healed. She can be delivered. She can be set free. She can be made whole. Hallelujah. She can be made whole. And she believed in the report. Is a faith coming by hearing and hearing my God's word. Is it when your faith is in Christ Jesus, you don't see impossibilities, you don't see limitation. All you can see is possibility. Because faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. And she heard about Jesus. Then she said, if I can touch, I will be made whole. Faith in God can change the climate of your dream, your vision, your calling, and your destiny. And God is saying this right now. Believe me. Now, I want to show us something that is quite important here, Jesus had an experience, I'd like us to look at verse 36, verse, okay, let's look at, okay, in verse 36, from verse 35, Luke chapter 5, from verse 35, he said, why yet he spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue house certain which said, thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. He said, This is what it takes to change any situation. He said, Be not afraid, only believe. The situation was out of hands. They, you know, in Africa, we can say, when the situation is out of hands, it means when you can no longer handle the problem, when you can no longer, when the problem have exceeded your human capacity, your human relationship network or connection. So this guy here was, he came to Jesus before the, if you read the entire scripture, the entire verse, the entire chapter, you notice he came to Jesus 
And Jesus was on his way to his house. Then the woman of issue of blood took over. <laughs> with her faith, she collected her healing. And with your faith, you can take your healing. You can lay hold of your healing. With your faith, you can believe God and say, Lord, I take my healing. And she said something that was quite important here. As soon as she heard the word spoken, Jesus said, Be not afraid, only believe. You see, whenever you hear a bad report, the first thing to believe is to believe what God's word is saying. That's what to believe. Not the report of the enemy. It's to believe what God's word is saying. He said, believe the, the Lord your God you will establish. He said, believe his prophet. He said, you will prosper. How are you going to prosper? It's when you believe the Lord your God. He said, you'll be established. You believe the prophet, you're going to prosper. And the word of the Lord came to him and said, be not afraid, only believe. Wow. This is the key to victory. This is the key to changing any situation. Whenever you come in contact with a situation that looks overwhelming, that looks like there is no way out, there is no victory, only believe. When it looks dry, scared, <laughs> and everyone is giving up, Jesus said to him, only believe. Vex 37 said, and he has suffered no man to follow him, said Peter, James, and John, and his brother. But thirty eight said, And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and CX, you know, there was a lot of people weeping, there crying. And look at verse 39. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado? And weep, the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Wow. Jesus, the girl was dead, and already dead. And Jesus said she was not dead, that she sleepeth. This is how to look at your problem. Don't see the problem as a problem that cannot be taken care of. Jesus said she sleepeth. Wow. I love his perspective. I love the way Jesus spoke. You look at the situation. You look at your financial situation. Then you declare to yourself, I'm rich. I am blessed. I am made whole. I am prosperous. I am winning in life. That is what to say. Jesus never said she was dead. Jesus said she slept. And then, verse 40 said, and they laugh at him to scorn. People were laughing. <laughs> wow. We're reading Mark chapter 5, verse 40. Mark chapter 5, verse 40. If you're just joining this broadcast, Mark chapter 5, verse 40. And when Jesus said, the, 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 the damn said, sleep bed, verse 40 said, and they laugh him to scorn. But when he has put them all out, you know, you got to. Disconnect from those that are walking unbelief if you're going to have a miracle. There are certain people you don't have to connect with. If you're going to have a miracle, unbelief can hinder the possibility of your faith walk. He put them all out and he, he ministered to the girl and she came back to life. Those who mocked him, they never knew who he was. Those who mocked him never knew his faith was in operation. Faith does not respond to mockery. Faith does not respond to limitation and opposition. Faith responds to the word of God. Faith responds to God's word. Not to limitation, not to opposition, not to crisis. Faith responds to God's word. They laughed at him. This is what happens to a lot of us when we, we declare our vision, declare where God is taking us to. Then you see someone making a mockery of you. If you're not careful, that can, can be a distraction to you. And she refused to allow how they spoke about her, about him, sorry, to affect him. They laugh at him 
at, to scorn the love. They were laughing because they knew the girl was dead. So why is he saying the girl is sleeping? We all know we have gone to torture, we have shake her body, we have tried to do some things, humanly speaking, to bring the girl back. And you're telling us the girl, these were people that were crying, they started laughing. They were crying some few minutes ago, and right now they started laughing. Why are they laughing? They are laughing at Jesus because he said the girl is sleeping. This is how to address your situation. Never magnify any situation above God's word. Never magnify any situation above God's word. Always exalt the integrity of God's word, the authority of God's word above the situation. This is what to do. Exalt the integrity of God's word above the situation. It doesn't matter what the situation may be in the natural. Exalt the word of God above it. It doesn't matter what the doctor's report is saying right now. They may be saying you know, they are laughing at you or they are doing something against you. But listen, faith in God will make you whole. That woman took her healing by faith. And when Jairus heard about what was going on, Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. Because when we believe, things begin to change. When we believe, miracles begin to happen. Today, I welcome you to walk by faith and all things will be yours. If you are watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. When you make that confession with us, now we encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you're going to have a lot of videos coming to you that will help you grow and develop in your walk with God. That's what we'll do. We'll have more than 750 videos on YouTube to encourage you. And also, you can send us friends requests on Facebook. It's Fitman Ogweda or Fitman Ogweda Ministry. That is how you're going to prosper as you listen to God's word, meditate on the scriptures. You're going to grow and succeed in your calling. We're looking forward to hearing from you, knowing that the God's word coming to you is a key to true success. Now, I want to say this to you. You can also consider partnering with this ministry through partnership. We're able to spread the word of God all over the world through 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 partnership. So you can partner with us on PayPal. On PayPal, it's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Thank you for viewing this broadcast. Until our next broadcast, don't forget there is greatness in you.